Hello everyone and welcome. Before we start the debate, I would like to remind each and every one of you the context of the debate. What you are about to witness is part of our curriculum of moral education on the controversy of the debunking of statues. This debate simulation is basically a way to sum up all our work since the beginning of the year. So yes, all the students will be assigned a role, as you can see with in front of them, so we don't have to memorize as long as it goes. So Elia and I will, provide, will be the moderating team, so in order to provide a pleasant experience for all of you. <coughs> Sorry. Our objective today is to make a mapping controversy, which is an educational approach to try and understand a very complex subject that often leads to various disagreements. And with that said, I propose we start the debate. So we wish you a pleasant moment in our company. So today we'll be treating a, very, a pretty recent subject, and it is the unbolting of statues. And to help us, we are honored by the presence of various experts, which we obviously thank for their presence, despite a very busy schedule. Now, for a bit of context, about two years ago, not one but two statues of Victor Schulcher have been violently destroyed on May, on May 22nd, 2020, at the occasion of the abolition of the, sla of the slavery in Martinique. One of the statues was in Fort de France, and the other one was in bourg -Cholcher. Also, I must add that these statues have already been the main targets of attack, as the principal municipal council had reported severe degradations on these particular monuments back in 2013. Now, please note that this phenomenon is known worldwide, as you can know with the movement Black Lives Matter in the USA, or this, here in the UK with the statue of Edward Colston in Bristol, who have encountered a similar, a similar fate. Nevertheless, we'll, we'll be today focusing on, in the, on the case of France, as the statue of Louis XIV's minister, Jean-Baptiste de Colbert, which you can see right here, is subject to, to controversy, mostly due to its glorious dimension and its ge geographical position in front of the Assemblée Nationale. As Colbert participated actively in the elaboration of the Black Code in 1685. Only now, we could ask the question, as the media do, should we unbolt our statues? But we would like to have a more scientific approach than political. If this subject is so relevant today, it's also because it has a major political impact. <coughs> Many politicians have already expressed their opinion on the debunking. Emmanuel Macron, the President of the Republic, in June 2020 stated that the Republic will not erase any names or traces of its history, nor debunk any statues. Focusing on the current candidates for the upcoming upcoming election, Marine Le Pen also said that there is no way we will not revisit our statues in June 2020. On the other hand, Christiane Taubira, whose, also, whose law promoted in 2001 that slave trading was a crime against humanity, has stated that some of the statues might have a place in museums and that, is better, that it is better to observe things in all their shade. Obviously, all these elements indicate a more political debate, although we are aiming for a more scientific approach by giving the floor to experts who have dedicated their time and knowledge on the subject. To start off, I would like to hear from Jean-Noël Jeannet, who was among the first to discuss the debunking in a very engaged way in the daily newspaper Le Monde. To you, Jean-Noël. Thank you. So I believe there's only one position that is reasonable for this debate, and it's the one concerning the historian who places everything back into its context in the only purpose to explain history. Uh, as a French historian and politist, specialist in cultural, uh, political, and media history, I think um, that debunking statues is, and removing them from public spaces is, um, would mean erasing our history. So we must not judge those statues with our eye of the present. The primary duty of those who are concerned, um, who, or those who are responsible for educating citizens, is to put everything back into its context. So one must never put history under a retrospective look, and. Uh, but put everything back into its context and explain. Yes, thank you. I'd like to uh, also put a uh, very important point on something, which is the difference between glorifying and commemorating, and to keep in mind that statues are a way of keeping an eternal link with our past, and that they also allow us to look back, reflect, and never repeat the mistakes that our ancestors made. I really cannot stress enough how important it is to do that distinction between glorifying and commemorating. 
Thank you, Mr. Genet. I think, Françoise Vergès, you have something to say? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your intervention, which I completely disagree with. So it, it is true that statues create debates within our society, and it has been shown over time that the controversy essentially um, is linked to figures uh, linked to the colonial history of slavery. So I'm Françoise Vergès, and as a political scientist and as a feminist, uh, I honestly question these statues. Why are some of them displayed in public space? We can take the example of Colbert. Why is he such a national hero? Why does he have a place uh, in front of the Assemblée Nationale? Uh, we understand at some point that the choice to raise a statue is a political choice, and therefore we can come back to these choices. Um, public space is in no way a neutral space, nor a ground of equality between, first of all, men and women, and then between white men and women and racialized people. I mean, it's an insult and aggression to descendants of slaves, to immigrants who want to be welcome like anyone else, because those who are valued are those who impose the black code. Um, I completely disagree with what you said. Um, the action of raising a statue is a form of celebration. You cannot expect a statue to be there and just educate. It celebrates something or someone. Yeah, so um, the statues are a symbol of violence. They are against friends motto, liberté, égalité, fraternité, liberty, equality, and fraternity. They, so taking down the statues is a part of um, the fight against racism, and national history is told through the statues, and it should be as fair and objective as possible. An example of the statues is uh, Tulcher. He got all the credit for the abolition of slavery. So again, a white male got the credit. And um, all the slaves that fought for the same reason are forgotten. Uh, Jean-Noël do you wish to answer? Yes, with pleasure. Um, I completely disagree with what you just said. And to come back on the subject of Colbert, um, he holds in his hand on the statue a piece of paper. This piece of paper, as you said, represents the black codes. And it is a historian's duty to keep in mind that the Black Code was written at a time where pretty much all of Europe was uh, colonizers. And he did it as a desperate attempt to regulate the hideous act that is slavery. Furthermore, when hunting down manifestations of racism, misogyny, homophobia, or mass massacres, you find yourself giving into a moralizing frenzy that will take you on a very dangerous path because you'll find out that most of our Third Republic uh, founders were colonists, and would you like, therefore, to strip the names out of all of our streets, buildings, high schools, or would you perhaps like to take down the statue of General Charles de Gaulle or Churchill, who both have passed as fervent colonizers? Uh, yeah, that clearly shows that you are against uh, the human rights. Nothing in public space should be insulting someone, therefore the statues are. so. And Charles de Gaulle, I mean, I, I'm speaking of colonial statues like Colbert. Okay, I think you both have made your points very interesting. Can we now please hear from Bertrand Tillier? Um, well, hello, first of all. Um, well, I want to come back to what François Vergès uh, said. Uh, she said that we in France use the French mo motto, uh, liberté, égalité, fraternité, which is a very strong motto. But as a historian, might I remind you that this motto was created by Robespierre in 1790. And uh, as we all know, Robespierre uh, shed bloodshed in France for multiple years during the La Terreur. Therefore, coming back to the subject of statues, if we start destroying statues, we might as well destroy the French identity. And as well, we cannot represent an individual through one single act he committed in his life. Taking the example of Jules Ferry, who was considered a brilliant man for his time, creating free, ed free education for children under the age of 12, well, did participate in horrendous activities such as the colonization of Africa. And it just shows that we cannot impose today's standards to a man who lived over two to three centuries ago. First of all, because it's unpractical, and it's also called anachronism. Thank you. Thank you, Bertrand Tillier. Uh, Miriam Cotias, I think you have something to say. I would like to say that the eradication of statues results in the eradication of the past, and we must face this past and assume it and find a rational solution to this controversy. Um, the history of France clearly could not be the same without the history of slavery, and therefore we would be erasing the past. Um, so 
the true battle that we must face is clearly that of the awareness revolving around the history of slavery and post-slavery instead of the statues themselves. Um, so I'd like to come back to what Bertrand Tillier said. Um, so you shared with us um, a historian's perspective. And I think that this um, debate should become public. It should be put on a national scale um, instead of simply narrowing it down to a specialist's opinion. Thank you, Miriam Cotias. Uh, sorry, I kept you waiting, Jacqueline Lewitt. Yeah, so going back to Colbert, um, people always talk, yeah, the Côte wasn't good, yeah, the Côte was bad, but do people actually know what the Côte is? Well, I don't think so, actually. Because the Côte was something done by, done by Colbert, of course, but it wasn't entirely done by him. He didn't have the power to free the slaves, so that's why he did the Côte And if you read, actually, the Côte it says that... During Sundays and periods of celebrations, slaves weren't allowed to work. They had a minimum amount of food. They had uh, once every month or so a new clothes. So it just it didn't make their life perfect, but it made their life more bearable. He wasn't a king. He didn't have the most power in the world. So that was the only thing he could have done. He could have done less, but, but he didn't. He did as much as he could, and that's why I think people misunderstand what the Kunwar actually is. Thank you for this professional approach. Yes, Emmanuel Furex. So in regards to what um, Françoise Vergès said, uh, I completely agree that statues do have a, uh, do glorify by nature. Uh, they're represented uh, in a state of power and importance and they're put on a pedestal. But um, I think we need to arrive at a middle ground as uh, anachronism, it, it doesn't work. Um, uh, but, and since a statue is ma has been made in the past with the values and ideals of the society uh, in which it was made, um, uh, I don't think, um, and, and it hasn't changed since the, the time it was made. So um, as, as a passerby um, looking at a statue, uh, I don't think they'd uh, take into account the context so um, they need. So the statue would need to evolve with the values and the norms of a society, and uh, yeah, um, so that we could arrive at a middle ground, and um, and it would take into account the 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 <laughs> uh, well, yeah. And I would also just like to emphasize on two brilliant points made by Miriam Cotias. The first being that if we do erase the statues from, our, from the public place, then we are effectively removing the, the staple, uh, a physical staple that, uh, of our history on the public domain. And uh, secondly, that we should really be taking this to... Uh, well, uh, leaving the opinion up to uh, the public as well as artists. Because, I mean, I, I'm sure, Bertrand Chilier, you would agree that uh, the public here today that are look at, uh, watching this debate will formulate their own opinions by the end of this debate and would, would ultimately want to be part of this controversy. Thank you. Yes, Carpa Diallo. So in response of what uh, Miriam Kutia said, uh, this is not about erasing or forgetting our past. We just want the symbols of what can never be repeated to stay in the public eye, but with a certain education around it. Um, and I just wanted to remind you that erase, taking down statues from public places does not mean forgetting our history. There are other options. It's not just completely destroying the statues and destroying history. We can always put them in museums where, like everyone said, everything is recontextualized. We learn about the good and the bad about the people and their actions. It's contextualized in history and just ev all the nuance that was there during the history is there. Thank you. Uh, yes, Françoise Vergès, back to you. Thank you. I would just like to come back to um, Bertrand Tillier and, Myri and Myriam Cotias. Um, times have changed and society has evolved and you have to stick with both of them. So. Why do you, are you so attached to these statues? And maybe Jean-Noël Janet can answer too. What do you get from them? I mean, history is not written in statues. If you want to learn something, read a book or search for paintings or pictures. Why do you have to raise statues? Yes, Janet, you can answer. 
Thank you. So uh, the statues are a testimony of our history. So they commemorate people who shaped our societies and who are, we are today. Um, we must not uh, forget that without the, the slave economy, the France uh, wouldn't be the nation it is today. So that's why we are so attached to our statues today. Thank you, Jean-Noël Jean Jeannet, uh, Bertrand Tillier. Well, thank you. Uh, Freebex just said that he, want to, uh, he wanted to get rid of the statue, but you can't because statues are an artistic and uh, statues carries with them uh, their artistic and cultural heritage. And if you do destroy the statues, you are also getting rid of the, uh, those uh, heritage. Uh, and so you just can't uh, try to degrade, to rip off uh, our uh, heart because if you do that, we just, you will just create a path to uh, ignorance and obscurantism. And therefore, if we continue to destroy or get rid of these statues, we'll just lead into a movement of cancel culture and we'll have no more culture. And culture is an important part of our society that I think you all are forgetting. Thank you. And also, uh, culture just defines you. So you, I'm pretty sure you don't want to destroy what does define you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bertrand Tillier. Yes, Miriam Cotias? Um, I just wanted to come back to what Jaffa Diallo said about um, putting the statues in museums. I think it's important that um, we do educate the people about these statues, but um, instead of putting them in museums, I think we should put in place contextualizing plaques um, to really put the statues back into their context. And we should also find symbolic and um, appropriate uh, places for each individual statue. Yes, Carfa Diallo, would you like to clarify something? Um, statistically, one in ten people read plaques, so no one will really understand the contextualization. And let's assume that people did read the plaques. For the contextualization of history, everything is very nuanced. There's two sides to everything. It's extremely long. No plaque would be long enough to educate people in a few seconds passing the statue. Yes, sorry. Um, Jacqueline Elouette? Uh, I'd like to add on on Carpa Diallo's argument, because I think that uh, plates and other similar gadgets won't lead to any real solution, and instead will keep running in circles and bickering in between us, uh, such as the example of the statue of Schaucher, um, because uh, where, uh, he, there's, a, um, there's a statue where he's holding a youngly liberated slave, and some of us think it's disturbing, whilst others think it's um, an act of kindness. So we all have our own opinions, and contextualizing plates won't actually change anything. Yes, can you pause the mic, yes. I also feel like there's an important link between the place and the statue. So we can take the example of uh, Federbe. He was a general of Napoleon III. He was general of the Northern Armies. He won very important battles. So there's a statue that was done for him in Lille. However, some people are not happy about the statue because of his part in colonialism. But his statue wasn't put in Senegal or somewhere or in uh, Bordeaux or anything where some, when colonialism, where slaves and everything were very important, like the economy was very important. He was put in Lille because there's a symbol in Lille. He was a commander of the Northern Army, so he was put in Lille. It's got nothing to do with colonialism. People need to see that after a while. And yeah, that's just what I have to say. Thank you. Uh, yes, Julie Deschepeur. Um, so I'd like to propose a sort of a compromise between the two sides. I'd say that uh, that we can't destroy these statues and vandalize them as they is still art, but we have to some, somewhat understand these people's feelings and why they are offended by these statues. So what I'd like to do is, op is to have some sort of open air museum where all these statues would be reunited to of and where people could go to inform themselves on these, on these people. Uh, they've done this in Lithuania, where they've uh, reunited the statues of Stalin and Lenin and all these big dictators for people to come and learn about them if they want, but it's a choice. Uh, furthermore, I would like to add that these um, parks should be put in uh, environments that are adequate for these statues. For example, if we put a statue of Stalin in America, it will create a whole scandal. But if we put that same statue in Russia, it won't really have any effect on the population. Thank you, yes, Miriam Kotias. I'd like to 
so that by saying that I definitely agree that we should have specific settings for statues such as parks or roads and I also think that we should be adding statues of important people um, but I think the real problem is Colbert, for example, who is displayed in front of the National Assembly. He was obviously a very fundamental character in the history of France. However, obviously, of his acts of violence and his unethical and horrid ways. Um, and then we have Toussaint Louverture, who is in a more secluded and isolated area. And this is where the real problem lies because of this unfairness. So we should find some unbiased areas where all statues could be displayed. Thank you, Miriam Cotias. Françoise Vergès. Um, I just want to answer to uh, Miriam Cotillas about adding new statues. As you said, there is a problem uh, because uh, there are inequalities. Toussaint Louverture is in a small town where it's barely anyone can see him. And you have Colbert that's in front of l'Assemblée Nationale. And so this sol solution doesn't work because it's too complicated. So And um, I agree that we should take the statues um, out of the public space. I don't think a museum is a good idea because I don't know who would want to visit such a place. So I think we should put them in a warehouse where um, every people that want to study the statues for um, any reason can go, but um, it's a choice to go. Thank you, François Vergès. Yes, Emmanuel Furex, you've been waiting. Um, so regarding what um, Diallo said about um, plaques not being read and we should put them in museums, uh, but the same people who don't read plaques, I don't think they'd have any interest in going to a museum. And also, statues don't have a purpose of education. I think uh, they represent stuff that happened in the past and they touch on uh, things that have already been learnt. Uh, so I don't think we should rely on statues to educate, but to represent and represent uh, ideals and values of our society. Thank you. Uh, yes, Jean-Noël Janne. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd just like to come back on what Carfagello was saying about moving the um, statues into museums. And I'd just like to remind you that, as Bertrand Tillia said, this consists of an anachronism, which is a capital sin against the morality of the past. And you can't simply go about the um, frenzy of nowadays to want to move statues, destroy them or anything, because you have to put everything back into the historian side, which is putting everything back into its context and explaining history instead of trying to put a label on it or watching it with your eyes of nowadays. Okay, thank you. Yes, Magali Besson, you haven't said a word since the beginning. Um, yes, I would like to uh, open um, my stage on statues are an issue nowadays, which is why we are having this controversy at the moment. And slavery is a crime against humanity in general. So I get that you're ping-ponging solutions that you aren't agreeing with, which is why we need to open a national uh, conversation. We are a democracy as well. So in the democracy uh, is but what all of the citizens within it. And I think um, Kurt, uh, Kurtis um, did elaborate the point that we needed to do a national conversation. And I agree with that. Thank you. Thank you, Magali Besson. Yes, Bertrand Tillier, we're listening. Um, well, I wanted to add that, uh, first of all, my solution offers the best of both worlds. And I want to a bit redirect uh, the question of unbolting, but to the heritage these monuments transfer. In, in that case, I think that commissions should be put in place uh, by historians to decide whether uh, statues should be put in a museum where there will they will have two functions. First, a educative function, uh, where people will be able to understand and learn. <laughs> yes, th please, please, please calm down. Calm down, please. Calm down. Oui, yes. Okay, yes, please, please. I think Françoise Vergès has proposed I think Françoise Vergès has proposed the solution. Uh, sit sorry. down, sit down. Excuse please us. sit down. Right. Jean-Noël Janet, sit, da sit down, Jean-Noël Janet. Please sit down. Yes, why? It's yes, please come it. please come on stage. I think Françoise Vergès is leaving you the space. Uh, thank you, Jean-Noël Janet, calm down. Uh, please someone give her a mic. Uh, please may I finish my uh my uh 
know you can't. Well, it's, it's really really <laughs> interrupted by you. I think we're going to be listening to Mr. Louis yeah, Georgetin, who just came in. It's really a humiliation. We weren't even invited. How could you imagine that? It's really a humiliation. Calm down. Please calm down. Calm down. Jean-Noël Janet, calm down. Jean-Noël Janet, please calm down. Please calm down. Please calm. Please calm down. Listen to the people. We're going to listen to you, Louis Jean-Jutin. Please, you can you can go back. Please calm down. Jean-Noël Janet, you claimed earlier that we are not commemorating, we are not glorifying statues, but commemorating them. That is false. Just look at Corbett. He's on his throne, looking down to us. That's a humiliation. It is a humiliation. Okay. No, it is a humiliation. Who sees the the piece of paper? Do you see it? Yes, I do. Jean-Noël, calm down. Calm down. You can't see the the paper. You really can't see it. It's a humiliation. Are you an historian? No, you don't have knowledge, so you don't you, you don't speak. Point. Well, um, what I think um, we must understand is that your onboarding methods are quite peculiar, or can be called also barbaric. You can take the uh, example of uh, Edward Colston uh, in Birmingham, who was whipped off his pedestal, his head chopped off, and his legacy broken, and to finish his torture, as if that was not enough, drowned with the acclaims of a few uncivil-like activists such as you, and uh, their uh, actions were under the protection of a term I don't really understand, of political efficiency. So may you p please explain yourself of this uncivil-like actions. Thank you very much. So I would like to add that, um, actually, Bertrand Thierrier, you said the right word. You say the word knowledge, and this is our key point, knowledge. So in the education program in France, slave trade is not really covered, and education is focused on Europe. So everybody knows here that um, the Republic is indivisible, and the Republic, the French Republic, is mainland France, but it's also Guadeloupe, Martinique, and all the other other sea territories. Um, we, should learn, uh, we should teach history and its globality in its entirety. Um, we should teach the both side of history. Thank you, thank you, please calm down. Indeed, Francoise Berger, you have something to add? Yeah, I would like to come back once again to what you said. I completely disagree, and obviously this is good that's happening. Um, historians do have more knowledge, but there's the sentimental and emotional part of these statues being there. So everyone should have the right to express themselves on this subject. So it's indeed a public matter, and uh, they are the ones that walk on the streets and see those statues every day. So I think it's important that they're here on stage to express their opinion. Yes, thank you. Carfa uh, Diallo, you've been waiting. You still have something to say? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Bertrand Tillier, then. Well, uh, first of all, you never cease to criticize any decisions that are taken on the discipline of history. Do you agree? Yeah. No. Oh, 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 you can't. Uh, but yeah, you never do such criticisms to, prof to scientific professions. And I would like uh, to know why you're ignoring the words of professional historians who understand the plurality of the, the history itself, and therefore are being put in commissions so that they may decide the right decision for the public. So, and because you are rudely interrupting my program for solutions, I shall finish. Um, the um, uh, statue should be put in a museum so that we can educate the context of the statues to the public, and so that there will be no controversy in the public domain where only non-controversial -contro statues should remain. Yes, it is the main issue. The main issue is education. We need to educate everyone, children as well as adults, on their importance in our history. Yeah. We need to create commissions where citizens, high schoolers, or even experts, if they want to give their point of view, they can. We need to install a democratic procedure. Everyone should have the right to speak. And right now, we're gaining the right to speak. Thank you, thank yes. you, thank you, please. Yes, Carpa we're listening. Uh, 
Um, Bertrand Cilia, I would just like to come back to your point where you say that scientific um, like researchers are never criticised. I completely disagree. I think that the whole anti-vax movement is doing the exact same. It's disproving years of research. So every job is criticised. So I don't see why yours, why you think yours is an exception, why you think yours shouldn't be criticised. Everything should be questioned by everyone. Thank you for this interesting point of view. Yes, Jacqueline Lelouette. Um, I think we shouldn't be criticised because we actually know what we're talking about. And that allows us to spot out false information when we want to uh, do historical debates unlike the activists that just came up on stage and are very uneducated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, Emmanuel Furex. <clears throat> well, while, while I am frankly quite um, um, embarrassed by the, uh, the actions that, um, well, <laughs> well, the actions that, Please. Well, I mean, I'm sorry, you did disrespect this debate. You could have come in here with a, more, a bit more honor. Nobody invited us. Please, Mr. No, that's true, keep, but keep it quiet, let you can talk. still say reasonable. And I am on your side. And I do feel that this should be a public debate. And I am myself an expert, um, Bertrand Tillier. And I do think that, I mean, look at these protesters. I mean, they are clearly enthusiastic enough about this controversy to raise their voices to want to be heard to contribute to this controversy. And I think that is quite important. So. Thank you. Yes, Jacqueline Lelouette, you can answer if you want. Well, the problem with non-experts actually is that, well, as I said, they don't really know what they're talking about. And as well, they can be very heavily influenced. We've seen with the Cambridge Analytica scandal, that on a much bigger scale with voting Trump and voting for Brexit, they managed to do it. So it would be no trouble for them to do it for a particular statue. As, and the thing is, an expert, if he spots an information on social media, if someone tells him and false information, he knows it's going to be false because he knows the exact information. But someone that doesn't know what they're talking about, like a non-expert, like you guys, because clearly you don't really know. Well, <laughs> well... Okay, sure. Please keep quiet. They won't know what they're talking about, so they'll just say things, say other things, and then tell other false information to other people, so on and so on. That's what social media is all about nowadays, let's be honest. So that's why we need experts. And that's my final decision. Um, sorry, sorry, just want to add yes, something okay, to go my go uh, colleague. And we can take such example for, for Schulzer, who we think uh, is the person who abolished slavery. Yet, in reality, his text only published one year later after the law was uh, confirmed, which shows that we as historians do understand that history is not as it seems, and that in the public domain, history is seen as w one truth, one path, and it's, it's simply not how history works. Thank you. Thank you, Martin Tillier. Magali Besson, you've been pretty quiet all the evening. We can't repair the past. We need to try and repair the present. Um, okay, well, as I said before, slavery is uh, a crime against humanity and you just keep going against yourselves to see who's more qualified to actually find a solution. And honestly, you're not looking at the bigger picture. So for example, I understand how you feel, historians, having more knowledge in that. And obviously the public did say it's a knowledge is key, right? But this is why, as I replied to Curtis before, this is supposed to be a national conversation. The, you guys are supposed to be taking into consideration the public. The public isn't just, right, they voted for you, going back to your point, um, uh, Jeanne, um, they did vote for you, but we still need to take every single one of their opinions in to be accountable, because slavery is a crime against all of us. Because uh, when, um, Slavery was first abolished in 1848. It was about, uh, it started a bit, honestly, if slaves were objects or people, like uh, Lelouette had said about the, um, the Code Noir. So I just want to say it's a crime against people against color, due to the color of their skin. So we need to take every single person in count. And I do have a bigger solution to offer you all because you seem to be um, not pinpointing on one. So. Right, we need justice against this main issue, right? And with justice brings peace. 
and this justice, we can't use the ordinary um, justice system that we have been using for ages because it has been, fr it has evolved, but it has been the main thing that oppressed people uh, due to the color of their skin. And we can't just use that and against statues as well because one, they're dead. Well, they're not dead, but they're not alive either. <laughs> And secondly, we can't just punish them. We can't punish people who are dead. Um, on another hand, uh, we need we need to find a new way. So a new way called the transitional justice. So in that way, to have a national conversation, so that we can be able to find a way to restore political, social, and economical um, uh, relationships between. Uh, well, experts, everyone really that is concerned, which is all of us, humanity, and recognize the strength of the history that is behind our founders and our countries and just the significance of it in general. Thank you, Magali Boson. But I'm really sorry to inform you, but it seems that our time has run out. So um, we hope that this helped you form an opinion on, a on this rather complicated subject. I remind you that our objective today was to um, approach this subject in a more scientific than pol political way. We hope that you had a good time and we are now open to any questions that you might have. No? <laughs> oh, thank you to everybody who um, participated. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very Comment much. That was very interesting. I was wondering, uh, is there many people against Colbert uh, today? Like, I mean, in Bristol, we have seen people really, um, how did you say, unbanking uh, the statues. But I don't see many people um, every Saturday or Sunday in front of Colbert statues, uh, like, asking for the statue to be removed. So is, is there a big movement against Colbert these days? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we should ask one of our experts. <laughs> yes, uh, well, yes. Yeah. Bertrand Tillier, I think you know uh, the answer. The statue has already been vandalized a few times, so there, uh, there are people who want to get rid of it. Yes, they want justice, and it was uh, vi um, vandalized with a uh, red paint in color, so that shows the importance of uh, their revocation. The movement themselves have been also removed on from one statue to another, so I believe they had their case recorded this evening. Yes, so there are some movements against the statue of Colbert. Are there any questions? Like, it could be related to the one of the opinions or on the moral education in French or English. Thank you very much. I enjoyed the debate. I just have a comment rather than a question, just to say that this is um, a very topical issue and it's uh, an important matter for society to discuss. So I would say it's not the preserve of experts, and, uh, it, but it's a very important discussion that you've brought out. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, you don't necessarily support the opinions of one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but we respect yours. We respect yours, actually. <laughs> Any other question? Okay, thank you. Well, thank you then. <laughs> <laughs>